Sometimes it's not about what's selling, but more about what's not selling. The shockers, the things you thought that would sell so easily that you were excited to list that just didn't go. In this video, we're gonna talk about the 30 things that I cannot believe I didn't sell in 2021. Hi, my name's Heather. I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark. My closet name is Hot Posh Fashions. We're gonna look at the 30 listings that didn't sell in 2021. The big surprises, the ones I thought would go quick that just haven't gone, they're still sitting in my basement. Well, there's actually a couple of items from free people um, on this list. And um, that surprised me. This was kind of my, this 2021 was my first full year of reselling on Poshmark and I was kind of excited to get into free people, but I didn't know that much about them. And I think that I mostly just overpaid for some of these items because they've had a lot of interest and I've gotten a lot of um, offers and counter offers that were just too low um, that I couldn't um, make any profit and sometimes couldn't even make my money back. So um, let's look at the first one. So the first one is going to be this Free People Cozy Oversized Boho Drop Shoulder Balloon Sleeve Knit Top Sweater in a Size Large. This sweater is so cute. Um, it really is, but I think the problem is I paid too much. So I have it listed for $99, but I have um, changed the listing on this, changed the price on this listing multiple times, brought it down, brought it down, brought it down. Um, the problem is, I think, again, that I paid too much. So I paid $33 for this sweater. So um, at $33, I mean, I really need to sell it for at least 70 and it's just not gone yet. And that's really a surprise because it's such a beautiful sweater. But I think Free People just doesn't have the, the uh, momentum that it once had. So I'm kind of disappointed by that sweater. Let's look at the next listing. We'll skip this, we'll skip a free people. We'll come back to some more free people in just a second. Next listing that surprised me is this Calvin Klein pink sunburst sleeveless sheath dress in a size two. I had multiples of these and they did sell, some of them have sold, but I'm just surprised that I still have this. It's a really pretty dress. Um, it's a really pretty color. Um, it's new with tags. And I did retail arbitrage this and I got it for $30, which this was early in my retail arbitrage. And I don't think that I would pay $30 for it now looking back um, because I don't think that the profit is there and there's just not enough um, desire for it. I also, I'm using this stock photo, but it is a little blurry. Um, so I may, this may be something that I re-photograph or try to find another stock photo of to see if I can get more interest in it. It has had interest, just not, just not the right buyer yet. The next thing that I'm surprised didn't sell in 2021 is this vintage Oscar de la Renta skirt suit career wear gray size eight. It's rare. I've looked for it other places um, and I just can't find it anywhere else. It's got some embroidery on it. Maybe I need to put embroidery in there in that title. Um, this was um, a thrift find and I don't have a lot in it. Cost of goods were $7. So I probably could um, be a little more aggressive on selling this. One negative that it has, it was sold together and does match, but one negative that it has is that the blazer and the skirt are two different sizes. Um, so it's gonna need just the right buyer. Let's go back to Free People. Free People candy color sweater in relaxed fit, soft cowl neck, stripes and size medium. Um, this is again, I bought all these uh, free people things actually off the Poshmark, Poshmark uh, wholesale um, platform. And I actually don't recommend it because of the things that I have bought there, you're actually gonna see several things on there that I've bought from different people off the wholesale market. And it just doesn't, the prices are too high in order to sell to make a profit. So this sweater I paid $54 for. I would never do this again. This was just bad. It's beautiful, it's adorable. It's, I mean, I think it's a desirable item. It's just not desirable at the price I need to sell it at in order to profit or make my money back. So that's why I'm still sitting on it. <laughs> Next, we'll look at this Gianna Benini chiffon gown in a size small, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. This was a thrift find. Um, and so I don't have a lot into it, but I've been kind of holding off because 
Um, I just think it's really pretty. I do think that I might get more interest in it once I update my listing. I haven't uh, updated with my branding yet. Um, so, you know, the last couple of months, I have a lot of listings. The last couple of months I've been going through and trying to update um, with my branding on my pictures, improving my um, titles and my descriptions and my keywords. So that might be part of why this is still stale and um, I'll probably catch it the next time it relists. I only have five dollars in this item so I could let it go pretty easily but it's so pretty that I've really been holding off on it. Next we'll look at another gown. This is Laundry by Shelley Seagal in an ivory white. It's formal or a wedding gown in a size two. This is really pretty also. It's, it's kind of a satin material. Maybe I should add that into the into the tags or do I have it? No, I don't. So I might need to add that into the tags. Um, and this I also thrifted, so I could um, let this go at a lower price. But again, I've been trying to hold off on it just because it is so pretty. I only have $5 into that dress. So I'm just holding on. It has been updated to some extent in the listing with my branding, as you can see, but I still need to maybe improve the listing a little bit more. Okay, let's go back to free people. Okay, let's look at this free people distressed colorful boho bohemian poncho sweater in a size medium. I actually had a couple of these also and I think I sold one. So maybe I had two of them and I sold one. Um, but it's again the story of um, I bought these on Poshmark Wholesale Marketplace and they are just, I paid too much, $59 I paid for this. So in order to make a profit at all, um, I have to hold out and that's what I'm doing. I've been holding out. Um, I'm, I have to go back and look because I feel like I've let some of these go for very little profit. Some of these free people items because I did have multiples. Um, lesson learned. <laughs> okay, now we'll look at another gown. This is a La Femme formal gown with lace overlay. This again needs to be updated. Um, with my branding, my improvements in my titles and descriptions, um, style tags, things of that nature. Um, this is being modeled by my daughter who's 14 now, but she was probably um, early 13 at the time. So she doesn't have much figure, but the dress was too small to fit on the mannequin or the dress form that I have. It actually was even too small for her. If you can see in the pictures, it's not fully zipped up in the back. And she's quite small, especially at that point in time, she was really small. Um, so we might need to get better model pictures. I don't know. It's a really pretty dress. It has a couple little flaws. This was also a thrift find. So again, I only have $5 in it also because it was a thrift find. So we can let that go if we need to, but I'd like to try to hold out just a little bit longer. Next, we'll look at a Tommy Hilfiger dress that I retail arbitraged. Um, this is Tommy Hilfiger sweatshirt tie-dye dress. And I have several of these also. Um, this I have listed, I, I probably paid too much for this also. This was my early days of retail arbitrage. So let's see, I paid $25 for this bad boy and I probably shouldn't have paid that, but I was probably thinking, you know, it's retail for 90 and I could get a good profit off of it. But that's before I kind of learned more about retail arbitrage and looking back at it now, this wasn't a very good buy. Um, I shouldn't have gotten it. And it does also need to be updated with my branding and my better um, descriptions and titles. Next, we'll look at this J for Justice chiffon floral romper size small. This is adorable. And this I did retail, uh, not retail arbitrage, this I thrifted also. Um, and it is just so cute. And I only have $5 into it. Um, which might be a little much of this brand. I don't think it's anything special. Um, and the material fabric is not anything special, but it's so cute. And I actually just updated this listing today um, as far as branding and trying to improve some of the titles and descriptions. So hopefully it'll get some interest now that I've kind of updated it. I can let it go for significantly less than $39, but it's so cute and I really want it to go well. So I've been kind of holding off on it also. So I've only dabbled in bathing suits and they were retail arbitrage. I think I have sold one and this is the other one. This LeBlanc, LeBlanc Orchid, Orchid, LeBlanc Orchid cross back one piece. This one also needs to be updated. Um, this was an e retail arbitrage and I think I paid too much for it also. Early days, you live and you learn. I paid $25 for it. That's too much. I should never have done that. And that's why it's still sitting because if I had paid $10 for it, I could let it go for much less. 
Okay, this was a um, thrift buy. These and I, these I just think are super cute. They're nothing in particular. They do need, this listing needs to be updated. Um, but these are Beverly Mills woven wedge peep toe. Um, and again, definitely need some updating there because I don't have uh, very much in there. It looks like they're a size seven, but they're just so cute. They're these like, like rainbow colored um, woven wedges. Um, and I, I thrifted these, so I probably just only have a couple dollars into them, maybe five. Let me look. I have two dollars, two dollars in those, um, but they just haven't had the type of interest that I was expecting. So um, I'm gonna have to, looks like there's three likers on them right now, but I'll have to work on those, um, the listing and see if I can improve the listing and get those sold. Cause those are just adorable and I just can't believe I still have them. The next thing is gonna be this Jack George's Voyager Sling Bag Crossbody Backpack in genuine Buffalo leather. This was a retail arbitrage. This is very nice. This is one of those things that I think if someone could see it in person, they would, they would just snatch it right up. And it's also kind of got that crossbody backpack um, trend style, but it's good quality. It's a very good quality um, backpack. And um, I did retail arbitrage this and I probably paid too much, $50. So I really have to hold on to it to try to get um, some profit and some, some payback on that. So that's why I still have it. You gotta be careful when you retail arbitrage. I think I learned a lot in 2021, especially early on in the year, about um, how to retail arbitrage and how to not pay too much. And a lot of these items are, that's that's what they are, is I retail arbitrage them and just pay too much for them. And I can't let them go at some of the offers that I've gotten. Here's the next one. This is a Kate Spade Mini Emmeline Briar Lane Quilt Summer Tweed Yellow Multi Crossbody. This is adorable. This is super preppy. This is so Kate Spade. But again, I paid too much. So, I mean, I can sell it for significantly less than what it would be in the retail store at full asking price. Um, but I, my cost of goods is $74. So I really have to try to hold out to get um, something significant. Like I can go lower than what I've got. Of course, Coshmark, you always want to put your listings lower, higher than what you actually can sell the item for. But you know, this also hasn't shown too much interest and I'm hoping maybe in the spring and summer it will because I feel like I might've got this late summer, 2021. Um, and so maybe it will kind of pick up as spring and summer come along and people want something for Easter because it's very Eastery. The next thing we'll look at is this Tommy Hilfiger Weekender duffel bag. This was also a retail arbitrage. So the Kate Spades were retail arbitrage at the um, Kate Spade outlet in um, Pigeon Forge at the Tanger outlet. Well, this, some of these other things are more like Marshalls and TJ Maxx uh, thrift, uh, retail arbitrage. This was a uh, cost of goods of $28. I've had some um, interest in offers on these, on this bag, um, but it hasn't been high enough that I've been willing to let it go. Um, I also need to update this listing. It's got some um, old pho photography that I'm not really liking as far as the background, the editing, and I haven't updated the uh, title and the description. So this needs some updates. The next thing we'll look at are these Nike Air Force Max Low TB Pro Basketball Shoes, size 14 and a half. I actually have these listed as men's and women's. I have two separate listings for these because they are a unisex style. Um, these have been updated, uh, photography and title description updates. So um, I, I do notice that I don't have style tags on here, so I would need to do those. These were also a retail arbitrage, but um, the Nike stuff that I have for the most part is retail arbitrage from the Nike clearance outlet in Pigeon Forge. Um, so I get those are actually pretty good deals um, because they are significantly marked down. For example, this one, well, I did pay a little bit more for these. Um, most of the things I get there are in the 15 to 20, maybe $25 range. This has a cost of good of $30. So I do need to hold off a little bit on these um, to try to get a decent price on them. But, um, I can go again lower than my asking price. And a lot of these things I have decreased my asking price over time to try to get some more interest in them. We're gonna need a little Poshmark water break. Okay, next we're gonna look at Lily Pulitzer. Okay, so I got a couple of Lily Pulitzer items. 
uh, that I retail arbitraged from either a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx a couple towns over. It's not something I very often see in the one in my town. So when I saw these, I kind of jumped on them and I paid too much. <laughs> um, but I jumped on them because they were so cute and I thought they would do really well and they have had interest, but they're really small sizes and I didn't have, they weren't discounted in any way. They were the regular, like either TJ Maxx or Marshalls, whichever store I was at at the time. But I have several items. I'm just gonna show you this one. This is just an adorable short shirt. And if this was my size, which I am not an extra small, but I would totally keep this shirt. It's a lily pole, it's Amanda Private Island draped short sleeve blouse top shirt, size extra large or extra small. I apologize, if it was extra large, I keep it. Extra small. Um, is very, very pretty, very, very cute, very, very Lily Pulitzer. But let's see what I paid for this baby. I paid $44 for this, so I have to hold out. That's um, still a significant discount off of what the retail price is. And I'm hoping again that as spring and summer come along that this will go because I do think that I got this kind of in the late summer, early fall of 2021. Okay, next we're gonna look at another Nike item. This is Nike Air Monarch 4 Martine Rose Collab Streetwear Limited, the limited edition, sneakers size 13. I also have these listed unisex in men's and women. Um, these have had my updates to them, um, but they, they have been sitting for a long time. I thought that these would do really well um, when I purchased them because they were limited edition and their retail price was very high. Um, over $200, I believe, but they just haven't done very well and I paid $35 for them and they haven't had a ton of interest. One thing I have noticed with these is every time I make an edit to the listing or relist it or anything like that, um, Poshmark wants me to certify it, certify the listing. It keeps telling me that, you know, it thinks that it's that it's fake and it's not fake. I bought it from the Nike outlet, so I, I know they're real. Um, so I don't know if that is having any bearing on whether or not um, these sell or whether they're getting a lot of attention. So that's one concern I have. So I've, I've even re-photographed them myself in hopes that that would help instead of using the stock photos. And that doesn't seem to really be helping either. And then I've dropped the price. I mean, at one point I think I had these in the mid hundreds. So I've dropped the price to see if I could get more interest and that, that just didn't work either. So I'm not really sure what I have to do to get those shoes to sell. Um, this is a pair of jeans that I bought on, not Poshmark Wholesale Market, but um, a wholesaler that I, supplier that I use. And um, so this is a pair of dark blue extreme ripped distressed boyfriend jeans in a size six. Um, I actually have multiples of this size, um, but I have separate listings for each one. I found that, um, you know, it's easier to create the listings if you have multiples of the same thing in different sizes on the one listing. But I have found that when I create, when people create bundles or I create bundles for people because they've liked things and I add them to the bundle and I wanna make them an offer, if I don't know their size and they don't have their size on their style card and nothing's selected and I can't figure it out, I don't know what sizes to select for them. So I have started making separate listings for each different size. If they're the same exact size, then I'll keep it one listing with multiples. But if they're different sizes, I've been making the same exact listing with the different sizes. So hopefully people will like the ones that are their size so that when bundles are created, I can go ahead and send bundle offers without having to try to figure out what the person's size is or send bundle offers with the wrong size. So that's why this is like this. And I do have this in multiple other sizes. But I got these jeans, um, this, this wholesaler that I use, I, this was actually part of one of my first jean denim purchases from them. And I was actually pleasantly surprised by the quality of their denim. Um, of course, it's not branded, it's a private label, um, but I, I was pleasantly surprised by how nice they were. They actually are good quality. Um, and I, I think that if someone saw them in person in a store, they probably would buy them. Uh, I have sent out offers, all kinds of, um, offers at different prices. Uh, I feel like these are very on style. They're a boyfriend cut, they're extreme rip distress. Um, so I think they're very on trend. And I didn't pay too, too much for these denim pieces. Um, I have $8 in these, so um, an $8 cost of goods, that's not bad. And they get interest, but nobody ever has, well, I take that back, I may have sold some sizes, but I just can't believe I still have them, is what it boils down to. And I have another similar pair slightly different cut, slightly different distressing um, that I also have that I just can't, I mean, 
I have multiples of different sizes, so it doesn't mean I haven't sold any of them because I think I have sold some, but I just can't believe that they're not sold out. I can't believe I still have them. I thought that they would be a hot seller. And, you know, I do go down on my prices. I do make offers. Um, I, you know, even periodically offer up to 50% off of bundles. So it's not like that these prices aren't flexible. Uh, they very much are. And I actually think at one point I might have had those listed up at the $85 mark. This is one of my very first listings. This is a pure hand knit cotton pink tassel hem sweater in a size extra small. This I need to probably go back and re-photograph. This was literally the very first time I went thrifting and the very first time I took photos and the very first time I put up listings. Hi kitty, don't step on the laptop please. Kitty wants to say hi. No, no, no. Okay, so the pictures are not that great. The lighting is not that great. Um, and it's probably something I do need to improve on. Kitty's gonna come sit with me. Whoa, you about just took out my laptop. So it's probably something I definitely need to improve on. Hi, kitty. Um, but I just haven't gotten around to taking the pictures because I'm never caught up. There's always a death pile. Um, so this was thrifted. Um, I'm looking at my cost of goods, but I'd say it's pretty low because it was thrifted. Usually when I say thrifted, um, I'll, I mean the Goodwill. Um, this is the cost of good of $6, which is actually a lot for Goodwill. And looking back on some of my, what I've learned about Goodwill thrifting, I probably wouldn't have picked this up now because I, to pay $6 at Goodwill or more, um, it would have to be something more than just this. The pictures just are not doing this sweater justice. It's actually very pretty with a lot of knit detail on it. Um, and it's in really good condition. So I just need to redo it and uh, see if I can't get it sold. I've lowered the price on it a lot too, but it just doesn't get a lot of interest at all. Okay, so here's probably one of the things that I the most can't believe did not sell in 2021. I don't think I sold a single one of these and I bought a bunch of them. They were on um, clearance at a Marshalls right after the new year in 2021. And I thought these would go like hotcakes, um, but they are Ray Dunn Goodbye 2020 t-shirts. And I, after I got them home, I did not comp these. Again, this was kind of early. Like I said, they were right after the new year. So this was early in my retail, retail arbitrage experience. And I didn't comp them and I probably should have because they only retailed for $35. Um, and the cost of goods were $10 a piece. So there is not a lot of wiggle room there at all. I have them listed at $35. They get almost zero interest. They're just not a good idea. I've never should have got these. I'm, I kept hoping that maybe as the year went on, people would have more and more interest. But quite honestly, I think part of the problem was is that 2021 wasn't that much better than 2020. <laughs> I think if 2021 had like, you know, really seen a, 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 a difference, um, you know, from the vibe of 2020, you know, maybe that would have been more interesting. And at the time of early 2021, I thought, oh yeah, that will definitely happen, but it didn't. It's still, you know, 2021 was only slightly better. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is um, another wholesale item that I got, not Poshmark, but from a wholesaler that I purchased from. And this is Apricot Distressed Sweater Color Block Relaxed. This needs to be updated, so that may help if I update it. Um, but this I just really felt like was on trend when I got it. It has that distressed hem, um, and it's got the color blocking. Um, so I kind of, it doesn't get a lot of interest though, which kind of surprises me. And unfortunately, I think even though I got this on the wholesale market, um, I think I might've paid a little too much for it. I have $20 cost of goods. That's way too much. I never should have paid $20. This again was kind of in the early, one of my first online wholesale um, purchases. Um, lesson learned, I don't think I would pay $20 for a sweater now that isn't some type of brand that I know can sell, but you know, just like a off brand private label like that. Here's kind of another situation like that. This is for my wholesale a wholesaler that I purchased from. This is the pink leopard print spaghetti strap chiffon maxi dress in a size large. Again, I have this in multiple sizes. I loved this dress. And I, when I was shopping at the wholesaler or with the wholesaler online, I thought this dress would do great. It's so pretty. It's animal print, but it's 
a color animal print. Um, it's got a good fit, maxi dress. You know, it's hitting a lot of the style um, trends that you would that you would expect to see. But I did pay too much. I paid twenty three dollars for that. Um, lots of times these wholesaler, um, it's not so much that I pay twenty three dollars for the item, but I'm also including the cost of shipping the item to me, which that can kind of rack up and be kind of expensive. Um, and sometimes when I'm buying things, like I know it, but I don't really think about it until I get it and then have to list it and calculate the actual cost of goods, including the shipping, and it just doesn't sit well. So this, I, I mean, I, I have not had a ton of interest in this item either. I feel like it's a very minimal interest in that item, which is surprising because I think it's really pretty. Here's another item. Um, this is actually from the um, Poshmark Wholesale Marketplace. Again, a case of I paid too much. Um, this is Tropical Floral Strapless Neoprene High Low Dress with Train in a size medium. I think I have um, two or three of these, but I'm not sure if they're different sizes. I think they might be different sizes. This is a neoprene. This is a thick dress. It's like something you would go scuba diving in, but it's a dress. It's actually really cool, and I think the pictures just don't really do it justice, unfortunately. Um, but the pictures I'm going to take probably aren't going to be any better than those modeled photos, so I haven't really done anything with it. And this has a, uh, this I paid $30 per item, cost of goods, so I just paid too much. And there's no brand because they're a private label. Um, so they're just not getting the steam and the interest that I expected it to, even though I think it's super unique and adorable. Okay, so this is another um, wholesale, online wholesale wholesaler that I use that I got some Moissanite rings from. And the mistake I made here was that I couldn't figure out how to select sizes <laughs> in the rings. So I ended up just making a selection that I I just was, you know, crossing my fingers and hoping would be something good. And unfortunately, when I got them, I bought like one ring of different styles, maybe like 10 different styles, but I just bought one of each one to see them and kind of get some idea of them. Um, but this is a Moissanite one carat platinum plated. Um, that's silver S290, S925 heart diamond engagement ring in a size five and a half. And that was the problem is that all, all of them came in fives and fives and a halves. And that's kind of a small size. I mean, I'm a bigger girl. Um, I not only am, you know, not five foot nine, but I have big, big hands too. So I can't even get these on my pinky. I mean, there are smaller women that those would fit. Um, but, and I think I've sold one or two of these, but in different styles, but I'm just really surprised that when I bought them, I thought that they would sell a whole lot better and they just don't get the interest. Sometimes they do. Um, but I think that the issue with them is the size. I think that they're just small and they just need just the right buyer who really likes them and is willing to pay for them. Um, these I have priced lower than if they were in desirable sizes. I would actually have these priced pretty much higher. I'd probably have them priced in the 250 to 300 range because they're one carat moissanite. And I think that's what they can go for. They're absolutely beautiful. They really are beautiful rings. Um, the stone is beautiful. I am. I, these are the first time I've ever seen moissanite and that I'm really, um, I'm sold. I really like moissanite and I hope to um, maybe dabble in some more moissanite um, items. But for right now, I think the issue with these is that they just are too small. Um, I did pay up for these in that they're, you know, more than the average item I would buy on wholesale. Um, but they are, a, they are moissanite and they aren't a good, um, they're good quality and they're in a good um, material, um, a good metal. So the cost of goods on this particular ring was, this particular ring was $55, um, which is, I mean, good for that, for moissanite, because this ring, if it was, like I said, if it was a size six and a half or seven, um, I could probably list it for 250 or 300 and probably get that. So that's not um, a bad price that I paid for it, even though I have a lot invested, it's just a bad size. The next thing we're gonna look at is again from the same wholesaler that that neoprene dress was. This is a distressed and deconstructed mini maxi denim jean skirt by Callie Lives in a size small. Um, this is a really cool, unique piece. And that's why I got it and I thought it would sell really well 
it looks like you took a denim skirt and a denim pair of pants, a denim mini skirt, and put the, put it inside a denim pair of pants and then split them open to make a maxi skirt. Um, it's really cool, it's super distressed. The sizes are really small. Um, like it says small, but it means small. And again, it's a case of I pay too much, so I can't really go, go very low. I pay $20 each for these. Um, but it's not only that, it's like it also hasn't had that much interest in the time I've had them. Um, I get interest here and there, but just not that much, um, surprisingly, because I do think it's a really cool, unique piece. Um, I don't think it's something you can just find anywhere, but still sitting on it. Okay, the next thing is something that I bought again on the Poshmark Wholesale Marketplace, but from a different wholesaler, not the same one as that skirt. Um, I actually think I might've got this in a mystery box from a wholesaler, I believe, because I don't think that this would have been something I would have picked out. So I'm pretty sure this was a mystery box. Um, it's a V-neck brown cream striped knit sweater in a size medium. It has had some interest, um, but, and I've had it priced higher in the past. I've brought the price down. Um, but I do have, it's another case of there might be too much money in it. Um, it's got a cost of goods of $15. So yeah, that's a little too much money that I paid for that. And I think what it was, if I remember correctly, is this box was a mystery box. And I think the average cost of goods was $10, but there were so many pieces that I was like, I can't justify $10. I can even sell that for $10. So I had to like, take my average cost of goods and kind of like make some of the lower items lower and put them at $5 cost of goods, which made some of these like higher quality things like the sweater, I had to put it at 15. Um, and that's just because, you know, the lower ones, I still think I have a bunch of the lower items too. So they just don't, they're just not selling. It was just too high of a cost of goods for that box. Um, okay. So the next thing is another Kate Spade item that I got at the Kate Spade outlet. Kate Spade Flock Party Large Continental Wallet. This has had interest on it, but there's just low balls that I can't take because of what I paid for it. Um, I did get this on clearance at the outlet store, um, but even on clearance at the outlet store, I still paid $66 for this wallet. Um, it is a limited edition wallet. Um, it is really cool, but I actually had someone just the other day kind of bouncing back and forth with me and they kept offering $50, which I can't take 50 because I paid 66. And then, you know, I, I, I countered with 100. Okay, I'll take 100 because I'm ready to just let it go. Um, and then, you know, they countered back with 60 and I countered back with 100, because I really, you know, 100, that's gonna be 80, and I paid 66, that's only $14 of profit on something I've sat on for a really long time. $14 on something you paid 50, $66 for is just not good. So, um, and then I kind of did some research. Um, this was again, before I started comping things. So last night, I was actually looking at this, and I did, um, some comps on it and it's just not, it is saturated. There are so many of this, this um, theme, this flock party um, theme, purses, wallets, um, card holders, all kinds of things. There's a lot of them available. There's a lot of them that have sold. And some of these of the large continental wallet that I saw that I've sold have sold for the $50, $60 range. Um, so I, I'm, you know, I can't hate on this this buyer for offering fifteen, sixty dollars because that's kind of what they sold for. But I bought it for too much, and I really just can't let it go for fifty or sixty dollars. I'm not ready to do that yet. So I think I'm gonna sit on it a little bit longer and see if some of those, um, see if some of the saturation in the market dies down. And I think if some of the saturation dies down, um, it's so cool and unique, and it's a brand new with tags that I think maybe it will get more interest when there's not as many of them on Poshmark. Um, and then maybe it will start selling for more, but right now it's just not selling for a price that's high enough for me to take, unfortunately. Okay, the next thing is a blazer that I thrifted. And the reason I can't believe this hasn't sold is because I think it's so pretty and it's another case of, you just can't get the pictures to do it justice. 
It's an Emma James by Liz Claiborne, pink and purple feminine tweed blazer size six petite. It does get interest from time to time, but it's like the close up details of this blazer are just beautiful. The the, the craftsmanship and the, the little lace trim around the edge and you know the colors that are in it and then that really cool purple lining inside. It, it, you know, and it's just kind of a cool, like old fashioned looking style. I only have $4 in this, um, so I could let it go lower, but I've, you know, it's just not had a ton of interest. And again, I think it's just because people can't see the details. It also is a petite, which is a certain market. Um, but still, I mean, I, I try to be sure to uh, put my petite items in the petite party, and that kind of helps spur some interest in those. Um, but this will eventually go and I'm not worried about it. I just can't believe I still have it because it is so pretty. If it's another case of if that fit me, I'd keep it. <laughs> so before we talk about our last item that I have on my list of 30 things I can't believe didn't sell in 2021, I just wanted to thank you for watching to the end of this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please click like. Um, that helps in the algorithm, helps um, other people get to see my videos so that they can also enjoy it and learn about what's not selling and what not to do. Um, also, if you like reseller content, specifically Poshmark, but any reseller content, that's what I make. Um, I make Thrift With Me's um, hauls for Goodwill, um, Joe Mar, uh, The Real Real, uh, Plato's Closet. I um, make What's Sold videos and um, things of that nature. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, just please go ahead and um, subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications. Kitty's gonna come. So you can get notifications of uh, when I put new videos up that might interest you. Hi Kitty. So the last item that we're gonna look at is another retail arbitrage. And this has had a lot of interest, but again, a case of Heather paid too much. This is a Tommy Hilfiger Sport long sleeve hoodie windbreaker jacket and a size medium. This is a men's item. And I kind of feel like that maybe if I cross listed this, or not cross listed this, but double listed this as in the women's to make it more unisex, maybe I might get some um, interest seen as it is a medium so it could be like a woman's large uh, if we wanted to sell it that way um, but it's a really nice jacket it retails for a high price I, I feel like I've done everything right with it but I paid $30 for the $30 cost of goods um, so I do need to try to sell it for you know at least you know 80 or 90 dollars somewhere in there um, so I can't really go much lower. I have had offers on it in the past, but they're just too low uh, for me to justify. So I haven't sold it yet. I'm still sitting on it. Early retail arbitrage days, uh, lessons learned. So I think the moral of this story is, is comp your items, um, know what they're worth, know what the market's like, and don't pay too much. Um, so I think that a lot of these items I either got on Poshmark Wholesale, marketplace or I got them on an online wholesaler and it had ended up having to pay too much because of shipping being so expensive or I retail arbitrage them in some way and I paid too much for them at the retail arbitrage. Um, so I just think that, or there, you know, I still need to improve photos or improve my listings. And that's why these items haven't sold or haven't sold for um, a price that I can justify. Um, haven't received interest or haven't received offers for a price that I can justify letting go. So I guess learn from me, <laughs> learn what not to do. This is my first full year. 2021 was my first full year of reselling on Poshmark. So I was still learning. Um, I started in October of 2020. So I was just barely a baby reseller for 2021. So there are mistakes here, but I have learned a lot and hopefully I won't make these mistakes again. And hopefully these items will eventually go and I'll get at least get my money back and maybe make a little bit of profit. So maybe we'll see them in a future what sold. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye.